hello everyone, what's up? Well, I think you need another new tea video, right? It's been about two days since I last recorded the recent theme video, yeah? But anyways, I want to wish you all a very happy Easter. It is a Easter Monday after all. It's kind of late this year, but anyways, I do enjoy the chocolate. So today's video, we are going to do the Tarantula Mythbuster video. Uh, this time it's going to be the 28th one, which is going to be a New World species, and you're probably going to be interested in it to what I have to say on the species. So before I get on to the Mythbuster video, uh, this user has been requesting me shout out after shout out to do this one and to promote his videos. To this guy right here, Okan Deluxe, uh, he is a German user that does comic videos. So unfortunately, I don't understand what he says because I'm, I don't understand German but uh, check out his videos. This is the reason why that I haven't been uploading too many videos recently. Because I have a molecular biology final next Tuesday and I have like 300 pages to read and I'm only at 102. It's very, very boring material, but I really have to do study this to do well. You know, DNA replication and stuff like that. It's, it's interesting, but really boring and dry at the same time. And it really cuts my studying time. As well as I taking this uh, field experience course where I go to a school and see how a teacher operates. It's part of my stage I have to do. And that's also preventing me from studying for this uh, final and also making good videos. But anyways, rest assured, I haven't forgotten you guys. I still answer PMs and comments and stuff so that's it so let's get started alright so the common name of the species here is the Colombian giant red leg which is awesome because there's only one scientific and common name which I like so the Latin name is Megaphobema robustum and the way we pronounce it is Megaphobema robustum okay so I do want to explain to you that there are other members in the genus, uh, you know, like Peter Classy, Mesomelas, and Velvetosoma. This species I have not raised or cared for. I don't really want them because uh, they're a little bit difficult to take care of. Why? Because they simply won't do very well in my tea room. These species require in the lower to mid 70s. Since my tea room is around 82 degrees in the daytime and 77 Fahrenheit in the nighttime, they really won't survive well, so, and they're press, they're really expensive here in Canada, so I just uh, skip the species and just keep the Ember Bustum since it's the easiest uh, one in the genus. All right, availability, online dealers. Yes, this is the only place that you may or are likely to find them. So I checked, you know, Typical online dealers, I cannot stress this enough, uh, PetCenterUSA.net, SwiftsInverts.com, uh, KenTheBugDiet.com, and as well as Arachnoboards Forum. The only place I've see, seen them for sale right now is at Paul Becker's site, PetCenter.USA.net, right here. Uh, he's selling an inch and a half plus inch unsexed spiderlings for around $99.00 which is very typical of um, the price range seen in here in Canada. So, I'll just skip it to nine right here. The size, the growth rate, the mature males, and the mature females. Okay, so the Emmer Bustin gets a fairly big size. They are very similar size to the Acanthoscuria uh, genus, like the Brocklehursti and the Geniculata. They can attain a six to eight inch leg span, so it's a really sizable uh, specimen. Mature males, um, I have an immature male right now, but as far as I know, mature males don't have tibial hooks, but they do have bulbous pedipalps. And mature females, uh, they look exactly the same as the males, except, of course, the males are slender-bodied, longer-legged than the females. The growth rate, I really can't tell you much about the growth rate, um because I never raised uh, my specimen as a sling. I got this one as a 4 inch uh, unsexed specimen that I deemed to be a male. 
Uh, he hasn't really grown very much. He probably molted like four or five times in my care. He is roughly around five and a half, six inches. So I could tell you right now it's a very slow growth rate. Well, maybe about the medium, slow to medium, I would say. I think it's much more plausible. Okay, so now about the enclosure setup and design. Okay, so as slings, just give you a low, low down, you know, keep it like this. Pill jar with a lot of substrate in here. Mega Fabima genus are a obligate burrower, just like the Ephoopa species, so you must provide a lot of substrate to burrow. So as juveniles, you probably want to keep them in a deli container with a lot of substrate so it can burrow. Then as a three inch uh, species you probably want to go into uh, you know the shoebox enclosures right here with a lot of substrate about halfway fill so it can burrow. And as adults they're perfectly okay in either this or if you want to go the big route you can use five gallon glass enclosures. So this is basically my setup I'm using uh, potting soil as substrate. It's a good idea to mix in some vermiculite in here, so this way it keeps the humidity in. Uh, a cave always, and a little decoration is necessary, and always provide a water dish. Okay, so let's go have a look at my specimen here. Let's get them out for you. So let's get them out of here so I can show it to you. Alright. Alright. So this is what my species looks like. It is a immature male. Megafibema robustum. And from what I understand, males of the species are really rare to come by, so I guess I'm sort of lucky there. Okay, now the care sheet video of the species. As I said in my earlier Megafibema robustum care sheet video that I made back in 2009, they can be a little difficult species to take care of just because of their humidity and temperature conditions. Uh, they really do not do well in really warm temperatures, like 82 to 85. They won't survive well. I find that they do better at room temperature to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is the best results that I have seen from this species as far as temperature is concerned. Now for humidity, you cannot keep this on bone dry substrate. So uh, the way I keep humidity in for this species, they like it around 80 percent humidity. So I fill in the water dish at all times, soak the substrate until it's moist, cover it with the mesh cover and take this uh, face cloth and block some of the ventilation out so that way the humidity stays in. This is exactly the same thing that I do with the Therophosa blondi and I misted that cage, I sprayed that cage over two weeks ago and it's still moist as ever so she's thriving in it. So let's go more in depth of the species and what this one looks like. As I explained to you before, it is a species that gets up to having a 6 to 8 inch leg span, uh, slow to medium growth rate. It is a very nice looking species, kind of resembles the Brachypalma bumgartenii, which hopefully I hope to own someday. As you can see, my specimen is not a mature male. It is a male, as I sex from the molt. And it's a very cool species. Okay, now for their urticating hair. Their urticating hair are located both on their abdomen as well as the hind legs, much more importantly. So if you check the other side of their tarantula, the hairs on the legs are not much more pronounced as these hairs here. As you could tell, they look very sharp. 
and they're pretty painful if you get in contact with the hairs. I've seen or heard some news on the species that it can actually these hairs can actually draw some blood. But what is very unique about the species, it's only exclusively on the amorbussum. I really cannot tell you if I've seen this behavior on the other members of the Megaphobema genus, is their threat posture. So I have a paintbrush, I'm going to show you exactly what the Megaphobema does when it's in threat posture. Okay, so... Alright, so as you can see, the species likes to bob up and down. You can really tell the urticating hairs on their hind legs. Okay, so that, that's enough. I don't want to piss it off more. Okay, so what the species does, as you have seen in many of my videos, as well as the other video that I did two years ago, the species likes to bop up and down, as you can see or as you may have seen. Uh, they do that in order to make themselves look big and scare predators. And if you really agitate the spider, they will r spin in circles trying to shoot all these urticating hairs on their hind legs. So once you do that, you really don't want to disturb it. And this is why I like this uh, species, because it's, it's unique threat posture. Temperament of these species, are, they're pretty skittish, and they can be very defensive if... Uh, you get very close and personal with them. So I really don't recommend this species at all to be very handleable. So as far as breeding concerned, I really don't have any info much about the species. It's not personally because I never actually bred the species before. Uh, I don't have any emorbusums other than this one right here, which is a male. Uh, I do know some people in Canada that have females, which I'm going to send my male away when uh, he matures out. So, according to Arachnoboards and ATSQ, the American Tarantula Society Forum, uh, this species can be very difficult to mate. I'm not sure if it's because the females are aggressive towards the males, or the fact that it is very difficult to produce an egg sac. So my inkling suggestion is that they may be very aggressive during the mating. I did see a thread by Brian S. from the both the Arachnoboards and the ATS forum. He has successfully paired these species up. I think he paired them up one to three times. He waited about two to three months and he managed to get a sack. So the sack only consisted of 47 slings and they were of large size. They were a good size too. Okay, so as far as recommendations are concerned, I don't recommend this at all for a beginner, like a new tea owner, uh, just because of its humidity conditions and it's really difficult to care for as uh, juveniles. It's much more easier to care for as adults. So, um, and also, I don't recommend them because of their aggression, too, and the urticating hairs that they have. Alright. As you can see, it's a really cool species. Very interesting to own. So, his name is George. Let's see, one more time, I'll demonstrate the threat posture lifts up its legs and bobs up and down. So you can see it's a very skittish and nervous specimen, so this is why handling is a strict no-no. And I'm starting to feel the hairs already. So I do hope you enjoy this awesome Mythbuster video. And next one we're going to tackle an old world species. So have a nice day guys and wish you all a very happy Easter.